we hope that you are ready for a fabulous day. And we are going to kick this off this morning with the a, a welcome and a bit of an address by one of the most important partners in this work. And that is Matt Erskine, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Economic Development in the Department of Commerce, U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, last night, some of us gathered and heard a little bit about the important partnership. And so, Deputy Secretary, we are so pleased that you are joining us here today. And welcome to Minnesota. Thank you so much for the partnership on the project. Thank you very much, and good morning. Thank you, Margaret, very much for the kind introduction and for emceeing today's event. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here uh, with you all representing U.S. Commerce Secretary Penny Pritzker uh, for this crucial conference, this important conference, and I'd like to offer just a few words of thanks right off the bat. First, I understand, as uh, President Kaler said, we have representatives attending this conference from across the Midwest, 12 states, and also our friends in Canada, four Canadian provinces. I want to say a special thanks to all of you for your participation and engagement uh, for this important conference. And would like to thank the President for his warm welcome to the beautiful University of Minnesota campus and for his service and leadership. You know, they, the University does have a very well-deserved reputation as one of our nation's most renowned institutions of higher learning, a world-class research enterprise that aligns closely with the needs of the state and its industries, and a strong and deep commitment to public engagement and outreach both locally and globally. And I'd also like to give a big thank you to the folks here at the Humphrey School of Public Affairs for hosting us today. And it's a great pleasure, of course, to join Michael Porter, Harvard Business School's Bishop William Lawrence University professor and one of our nation's premier authorities on competitive strategy. I want to thank him for his leadership, his service, and I want to thank him and his team at the Institute for Strategy and Competitiveness at Harvard for the strong partnership with EDA. So why are we all here? First and foremost, we are here to launch formally the new, vital, and compelling U.S. cluster mapping and registry tool. Put simply, this national economic initiative will strengthen U.S. competitive by advancing and making more accessible our understanding of the economic performance of clusters and regions across the United States. As Secretary Pritzker has said, effective regional economic outcomes rely on policymakers, businesses, and other stakeholders having a solid understanding of the region's strengths and economic opportunities. And this new tool reinforces the federal government's commitment to promote America's clusters and provide businesses and organizations with the data and strategies they need to capitalize on their region's assets. And so this morning, I would like to speak with you about how the U.S. Cluster Mapping and register, Registry Tool came to be and EDA's role in advancing regional economic development. And the story really starts with President Obama, who upon taking office, directed the federal government to work together to support development of our nation's regional innovation and industry clusters. And this approach is essential given the following context. Today, the United States stands at a critical moment as it relates to jobs, economic growth, innovation, and shared prosperity. And the economic landscape that we all face today is like none that we have faced before. Today, the United States is presented with two concurrent macro trends, one representing great opportunity and the other significant challenges. How we address these challenges and opportunities will largely determine what kind of economic future we have as regions and as a country. First, the U.S. is in a particularly strong competitive economic position right now for even stronger business growth from entrepreneurs and startups to large enterprises due to a number of national comparative advantages, including our strength in research and development, stable capital markets, continued increases in the productivity of American workers, strong rule of law and intellectual property protection, reliable supply and service chains, 
and the new opportunities created by the expansion and reliability of domestic energy resources. However, to seize this moment, a number of issues need to be addressed at the federal, state, regional, and local level across the United States. Now, I won't get into the partisan gridlock in Washington on some very large policy issues, but the issues that we need to address, that need to be addressed for our nation's competitiveness, also include, importantly, ensuring that our states, regions, and communities are positioned to most effectively support business ecosystems and the conditions for business growth. And as Professor Porter and many of you can attest, the American economy we always talk about is in reality a collection of regional and local economies. Which brings me to the second macro trend we are facing and the challenge before us. Many regions and communities are not fully prepared to seize this economic moment in full. While states and communities may be in a better fiscal position than they were two or three years ago, states and localities still face tremendous budget limitations. And that means that state and local governments, universities, and regional partnerships, which are at the forefront of helping to set the important conditions for business growth, often do not have the resources to make the critical investments at a time when the need is more urgent than ever. And exacerbating the situation even more, private capital still remains highly risk averse. Private capital is tied up due to the risk factors that permit, permit only the strongest investment opportunities to be funded without some risk mitigation. And yet we know that investment in public goods is critical. A number of thoughtful experts, including McKinsey, Harvard Business School, MIT, and BCG, have pointed to the importance of investing in public goods, investing in the ecosystem. MIT's production in the Innovation Economy Task Force states, one objective is most urgent, rebuilding the industrial ecosystem with new capabilities that many firms of all kinds could draw on when they try to build their new ideas into products on the market. And the report goes on to state, we saw the holes in the industrial ecosystem as the single most challenging obstacle to creating and sustaining production capabilities in the U.S that enable innovation to come to market. Holes that might be less picturesquely described as market failures. And the report concludes that creating public goods in the industrial ecosystem would be the approach likely to pay the greatest dividends to the US economy, but these are public goods that the market does not generate. The federal government can play a key role in this. By investing patient capital in a strategic way in the ecosystem, helping fill the holes in the ecosystems, all the while leveraging state and local development funds and universe, university assets and facilitating the reorientation of local economies toward productive investments in the ecosystem. And today we are doing just that. Under President Obama's leadership, the federal government is supporting regional cluster initiatives by realigning traditional top-down economic development programs to support bottom-up regional cluster-based approaches. And we are doing this by utilizing private-public partnerships in numerous initiatives, as well as promoting interagency groups and supporting collaboration across agencies. EDA is one of the agencies leading this charge. And since fiscal year 2010, we have invested in more than 100 collaborative regional innovation initiatives throughout the country. For example, in 2012, EDA led the Advanced Manufacturing Jobs and Innovation Accelerator Challenge, a partnership among several federal agencies to support initiatives that strengthen advanced manufacturing and accelerate innovation and technology at the local level. As a result, partnerships like Innovation Realization in Michigan, which includes the National Center for Manufacturing Sciences, the Workforce Intelligent Network, Detroit Regional Chambers Connection Point, Michigan Manufacturing Technology Center, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, Business Accelerators of Southeast Michigan, and the University of Michigan are working to revitalize American manufacturing and encourage companies to invest in the United States. And specifically, the Michigan cluster received funding to implement a brand new business model, one that is designed to foster innovation, bolster the design and manufacturing prowess of small and medium-sized manufacturers, and forge connections between these companies and the large manufacturing enterprises. 
Another great example is our Rural Jobs and Accelerator Challenge, which has resulted in more than $9 million in coordinated investments to support 13 partnerships and innovation clusters across rural America. Today, these partnerships are providing entrepreneurs and businesses with research and development support to foster innovation, build supply chains, and hire and train workers here in the United States. The important point is that all of these projects involve meaningful collaboration across agencies and state and local partners, both public and private, which is crucial for lasting innovation. EDA is proud of its role, and we look forward to continuing our efforts to promote innovation, help create jobs, and strengthen our economy. And I'm pleased to say at the U.S. Department of Commerce, these key priorities are clearly enunciated through our leadership. Our Secretary Penny Pritzker, a business leader with more than 25 years of experience as an innovator and as a builder of businesses in various sectors, is leading this charge through our Open for Business agenda. And critically important, under Secretary Pritzker's leadership, the Department of Commerce is expanding its role as America's data agency. For the first time, we have made it a priority, a department-wide strategic priority, to unleash more of our data to strengthen our economic growth, to make our data easier to access, understand, and use, to maximize return on investment for businesses, entrepreneurs, government, taxpayers, and communities. In fact, Secretary Pritzker has announced that the U.S. Department of Commerce has plans to hire its first ever chief data officer. The impact of our data investments is no doubt enormous for our businesses and our economy, and that is why the EDA partnership with the Institute for Strategy and Competitiveness is so important. As I indicated earlier, this new U.S. cluster mapping and registry tool that we formally launched today will strengthen U.S. competitiveness by advancing and making more accessible our understanding of the economic performance of clusters and regions across the United States. Policymakers, economic development practitioners, businesses of all sizes, and other stakeholders can use this powerful new tool, this new data tool, to capitalize more effectively on their region's assets in order to drive better regional economic outcomes. The tool's extensive organization registry will help connect policymakers, practitioners, and businesses with the organizations that are promoting and driving their clusters. And through its user-contributed repository of cluster initiatives, studies, and news reports, the tool allows users to share and discuss best practices in economic development, policy, and innovation. I can say with confidence that there is a terrific program ahead of you over these next two days. This conference will arm you with the knowledge necessary to put the U.S. cluster map and registry to use. You'll learn all the details, see a demonstration, and explore how the tool and the registry are being used in real-world applications. In addition, conference sessions will address topics critical to the competitiveness of the Midwest region, including transportation and logistics, knowledge creation and education, and the food, water, energy nexus. And interactive discussions will highlight your regional cluster initiatives and address the implications for economic policy here in this region. On behalf of Commerce and EDA and our partners at the Institute, we look forward to our dialogue and to working with and learning from all of you as we drive the growth of our critical regional innovation and industry clusters. So to conclude, the American economy that we always talk about is in fact a collection of local and regional economies. And we all know in our hearts and minds that when American regions are stronger, America as a whole is stronger. And in this new economic landscape that we all face, we must continue to focus on strengthening our ecosystems. And the new innovative partnerships and approaches are essential. I'm reminded of the important piece by Professor Rosabeth Moss Cantor in the Harvard Business Review entitled, Enriching the Ecosystem. And in her article, she specifically posits as one of her main points, regions must link leaders across sectors to develop regional strategies and produce scalable models that build on local assets and attract new investment. She goes on to write, ecosystems are inherently local. In each region, multiple actors that share an interest in local quality of life must come together to enrich the ecosystem and regional strategies work best when they focus on underlying capabilities and the foundational institutions that produce them. This is our continued collective charge. And overall, 
Going forward, you have my commitment that EDA will continue to help you and our other regional partners all across the country thrive in this new economic reality by one, collaborating closely to catalyze your local plans to drive innovation and create jobs, and two, help build the strong regional partnerships that will strengthen our nation's overall economic competitiveness. To quote our nation's first pioneer of the public-private partnership, Ben Franklin, the good we may do together is greater than the good we may do alone. So again, on behalf of Secretary Pritzker and all of us at EDA, thank you for what you do every day to make our country stronger and more competitive, and thank you again for the opportunity to be with you.